Thank you. Three minutes, I will try. So, uh, Senior Rights Wikipedia in Czech Republic, we run it for almost 10 years now, and I guess many of you heard about it, but I would like to celebrate a little bit that it's 10 years now. And so, this is the logo. I know that some of the other uh, affiliates decided to use it as well. Feel free to, it's at Commons. And this is actually the guy who found it, uh, Professor Jan Sokol. And he emphasized on that it's really pity that there is so many old people who have the experience and they feel useless, but they actually could contribute quite well to Wikipedia and to contribute to the education of younger generations. Unfortunately, he passed uh, away two years ago, but he was the founding member of the Senior Rights Wikipedia IDEA. And as well, he himself, it's a Wikimedian, Wikipedian. he edited about 5,000 articles in Czech language. And uh, yeah, uh, so the uh, people who manage to go through our courses, they as well can get one of those stars. And so we had about 600 people so far going through the courses and more than 17 towns where the courses have been organized. Uh, this is how it looks in reality, us meeting with them. This is František Šťastný, he has a very wonderful TED talk about him being involved in Wikipedia. Uh, this is the physical courses, uh, there in the corner, it's Anai, Jana, our lecturer, she's senior as well, but she runs courses like that with the full room. And as she as well run online courses on commons. So this is an online course, how to upload and how to photograph for commons. Uh, we run an alumni club where we meet. So these are some of my wonderful colleagues from the office, but as well many of our alumni from the courses. This is the editatons, but I want to show with this one that uh, once the seniors take part in our courses, they don't disappear. So we have a very good community who connects with us. They come. This is, this is from the Czech uh, Wikigap edition this year. And as you can see, they all come to Wikigap. All these guys have been there editing the female articles. Isn't that wonderful? And two of them are members of the NGO at the moment as well. And I would not be able to work on that if I would not have all the, like, all the guys in the lectures community this is another lecture, this is Anna again, and it's intergenerational work because we as well have our young uh, members in the community to join and to take part. Uh, Jan just graduated uh, last week from high school, uh, but he's our lecturer as well. He teaches the seniors to edit Wikipedia. He shoots all the videos we have, and he's joining my education team starting from June. Yeah, this is our education team. Um, thank you. Now we call the first Rebecca. <laughs> uh, no, it's the lightning talk, so you'll have the time the questions for afterwards. This one? Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks so much. Um, so I'm Rebecca O'Neill and I'm the project coordinator for Wikimedia Community Ireland and the first Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca 1 and Rebecca A. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick, um, I have pres presented on this, um, so there's two videos online if you want to learn a little bit more about it. It's an Erasmus project um, that we have um, that I'll tell you a little bit more about. But if you want to learn more, if you just Google me, in the edgy wiki week that we did, uh, we did a presentation for that. Or come talk to me. Okay. So, very briefly, uh, the project was inspired by Women in Red, but it's going to focus, it is focusing on three target minority languages. So, it's, um, we have partners in the Basque country, in Ireland, and uh, in, the, uh, in Friesland, in the Netherlands. And the idea is to get uh, high school students to focus on writing biographies about notable women relevant to their regions or their languages. Um, so promoting the language and our quote unquote unknown histories, which of course you know, we know that women's history isn't unknown, it's just undocumented a lot of the time. Uh, so surfacing these ideas of knowledge gaps and uh, gender biases to um, 
to young people in these three contexts. Uh, that's the, the funding that we secured for it. So it started in 2000, uh, 2012, sorry, 2012. 2022, uh, so last year, and it'll run um, until December next year. So we're in our middle year at the moment. We've so what I'm going to present to you now is just a few slides on our first kind of pilot materials that we've created. So the outputs of this project are going to be three toolkits: so one um, for students, one for educators, and one for glam professionals. And it won't surprise anybody in this room that the glam professional one is proving the most difficult. Um, but the idea is that this Wiki Women project then is something that they can um, take off the shelf with a toolkit and implement in their own context once um, our project is finished. So these are our partners, and you can see where, where we are. So we have um, three Dutch Frisian partners, um, two Basque partners, and two um, Irish partners. Um, you'll see that in Ireland and in the Basque country that two schools are the partners. Uh, that's because in those two regions you actually have the education of the students is entirely through those languages, whereas in Friesland the students take it as an optional subject when they're kind of towards um, the end of high school. So there is no Frisian medium school that they can go to where they learn everything in Frisian. So it's a smaller group of students that they, they um, have uh, as, a, as a pool. So what did we learn in our very first week? So here are some of the Basque students working away very hard and I have to thank Alder for uploading some photographs to Wikimedia Commons, otherwise I would have had no, uh, no illustrations for you at all. Um, what did we learn? So the students, before they came, they had been working on their biographies. So they had been taught how to use Wikipedia, they had been uh, brought to local libraries and introduced to the idea of research, and they had been introduced to the tools that they could use, how to cite, um, looking at kind of other good quality articles within their language Wikipedias. Um, but what did it feel like when all, so there was eight, roughly eight students from each context will travel? So we had, I think, six from Friesland, eight from the Basque Country came to Ireland. So they came to Monaghan, um, which is uh, in the north of Ireland, for their very first in-person Wikithon. And one of the most surprising things that we discovered is that, and this was surprising for the Glams, that students were most interested in living people. They weren't very interested in dead people, unfortunately, which, you know, generally if you're an archive or a museum, you're dealing <laughs> with people who are <laughs> not alive anymore. Um, so I know that some glams really then kind of struggle to be relevant uh, to the students. Um, students really wanted to draw on their own interests. This is not particularly surprising, but I think some of the educators and some of the glam professionals found this surprising. So students chose to write about sports people in a, in a sport that they played. Uh, if they were musicians themselves, they wanted to write about a musician from their country and um, so on. One that really took people by surprise was writing about influencers. Uh, <laughs> Very tough. Um, so the, but the cultural exchange was really important for the students. They really wanted to share with each other songs, dances, um, turns of phrase from their own context. And they really relished, like from the minute there was no shyness, they wanted to be with each other because they had not traveled, they had not gone on school trips for three years. So they really appreciated doing something in person, which was wonderful to see. There was no kind of awkwardness, which was fantastic with teenagers, very unusual. So this was our first cohort of students. We'll have um, a second one starting uh, from September with the students actually doing the project from, um, and if you want to know what, what these strange straw things are, ask me later on. Um, but the three main things that we got out of it was, out of that in-person, so what the students would actually do together is that they were really interested in actually working on translation, which we were really surprised by. We had thought that we would introduce them to some local Irish women that they could write about in their local context, but what they really wanted to do was translate each other's articles onto their own language. Um, so we just, we just adapted and, and we did that. Unsurprisingly, if you've worked with teenagers, they want to work really quickly. They really don't want to wait around for their article to be published. They want to edit it right now and they want to see it on the other language Wikipedia. Why hasn't my info box gone across? Why hasn't my image gone across? Why is this template broken? Like they want fixes right, right, right now. So one of the things we're going to do is do the research piece. So introducing them to the research skills at the start and not introduce the Wikipedia element until much later on. 
because they were getting distracted by the Wikipedia element too early. And the main thing that everybody learned that the Irish were able to teach them, which is this piece of Irish here, which is Tirgan Tanga Tirgan Anam, which means um, a country without a language is a country without a soul. And I will leave you with that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And now, Irvin's presentation, which will be in video. Hello, everyone. I am Irvin Santa Tomas, and this is my presentation. The Philippines was among the countries which had full school closures during the pandemic. In fact, the Philippines was the last country to re-allow the conduct of face-to-face -face classes without any formal classes from March 2020 to September 2021. In the basic education, limited face-to-face -face classes began in August 2022, or more than two years since the Philippine government declared community quarantine. During the pandemic, the Philwiki community took it as an opportunity to promote Wikipedia outside the classroom. Well, literally, in partnership with Kintab Artist Group, we had Wiki Loves Art mural painting activities. As part of our 20th year celebration of Wikipedia in 2021. In this institutions, PhilWiki community promoted reading Wikipedia in the classroom of the Wikimedia Foundation education team as our initiative. The Philippines Department of Education implemented a blended learning approach in the delivery of basic education, which included the modular distance learning modality. Interestingly, some of our contributions have even made it in the self-learning modules. So it gave me the idea to review all the self-learning modules and it led me to this study. This study was limited to English and social science modules in grades 10, 11, and 12 levels used in the first quarter. These modules were produced by the Department of Education, Region 5 BCOL. As a public school teacher, I have full access to this material. It was found that at least 50 modules used English Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons as sources. History, literature, and culture-related articles and images were the commonly utilized information in the modules. At times, Wikipedia was properly cited. In some modules, however, only links were given. For the recommendations, Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons should be formally introduced to school administrators as open educational resources by the Wikimedia Foundations and not just by volunteers through their initiatives. I also recommend to incentivize the teachers and school divisions that openly utilize Wikimedia projects in their lessons to remove the Wikipedia stigma among academics and to conduct regular Wikipedia trainings not just for teachers but for curriculum implementation division supervisors. Here are some of the examples. In this module, our fellow Wikipedia and fellow Wiki community co-founder, Hill Gregorio, was featured here. He is a published writer. Here is an example in social science. And in oral communication. The utilization of information on Wikimedia is not new in the Department of Education Beagle region. In 2016, 
information from Beagle Wikipedia and English Wikipedia were first utilized in a social science textbook for grade 3 level. Thank you very much. Mabalos. So the next one is Rafi. Hi everyone, Rafi here from Bangladesh and I'll be talking about NDC Wikipedia editorial and research team. Uh, my username is also the same, username Abi Rafi and I'm from Bangladesh. And I have, you know, as I told uh, earlier that the NDC Wikipedia editorial and research team is founded by me a few years ago in my own college, in my own country in Bangladesh, which is one of the most underrepresented communities in the whole Wikimedia verse. And uh, the team, NDC Wikipedia Editorial and Research team is working, is uh, operating in the form of extracurricular organization. And it works on professional skill development of the high schoolers, basically, through contributing to the Wikimedia movement. It is very effective when you don't get direct access to the curriculum of the education institution. Those who, uh, the organizers like me who are working in the underrepresented communities, face this a lot the authorities don't give direct access to their you know institutional activities it is efficient to increase Wikimedia awareness among educational stakeholders like teachers guardians and students and it paves the way for future Wikimedia activism in the education institutions we are already you know have we have already started understanding that benefit and the organization structure of this team is somewhat similar to the Wikimedia movement affiliates, but it is not an affiliate, it is a non-affiliate organized group, and it has its own executive committee that changes every year with every new batch, you know, uh, students come every year uh, in colleges and leaves uh, also every year, so, you know, uh, matching with that cycle, uh, students takes the responsibility of the executive committee every year and also leaves uh, the executive committee every year, and two batches of students has already passed and we are trying to focus on creating a strong alumni base. It focuses on a lot of topics as shown in the screen like some of the open source advocacy, open source intelligence, Wikimedia organizing, outreach, only key content creation and starting the dynamics of Wikimedia communities and a lot. And it's still in the bud, the idea is still in the bud, we are doing a lot of experiments and we have a lot of intended future wings like legal and advocacy, dev worlds, graphics and branding, strategy and partnership, leadership and management, and it has a huge potential of creating future open source professionals. And that's it from me. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Rafi. <laughs> So uh, the last session is Rebecca's. You can join here. Rebecca number two. Yes, um, thank you so much. My name is Rebecca. Many people call me Rebecca, but uh, uh, I'm also named Jeanette. Yes, uh, I'm happy to share with you some uh, experiences and learnings from Wikimedia User Group Rwanda. We are a group of people uh, of three years old now. Yeah, uh, our community started in 2019 in the Movement Strategy Conference. So Kimidia Yusuf Group Rwanda is growing now. We are more than 300 people, but we born from, we are a product of Movement Strategy uh, Conference, yes. Um, so I will quickly share the, the, the opportunities for us to, uh, uh, from Wikimedia to education. Um, as you can see this picture, we, we were doing this uh, Wiki for Human Rights. So, um, since we started in 2019 and we don't know what to do, where to go, but we had a chance to organize uh, one of the 
great uh, project, we decided to meet up to, to look for partners. Among of the partners we got, it's uh, University of Rwanda, UR, and then um, we call them to come and uh, we share learnings. They give us a uh, science uh, knowledge experience, biodiversity, uh, pollution, and uh, climate change, and thus we give them uh, our writing skills on Wikipedia. Uh, personally, I am an environmentalist. I am also a student in uh, biodiversity, but my community, we are diverse. Some are not uh, really in the field. So this is how we do it. This is how we partner with the universities and colleges. Yes. Huh. So um, from that chance, um, we do have uh, partnerships from local institutions, like bigger, bigger uh, institutions in Rwanda. As you can see here, this image, we shared our experience on this uh, group of people. They are in village in thousand province and northern of Rwanda. So they are uh, farmers, tea farmers. So as far as you have a partnership with tea institution, so we go to train tea farmers and educate, give them awareness about uh, Wikipedia. Yes, uh, we started in 2019, as I said, somewhere in East Africa. Um, uh, this was our first project, and we were like this number. But um, I would love to say that after some, uh, some one year, uh, we got a, a trust from Wikimedia Foundation, which I always love to think. Um, trusting a community, a smaller community, with only two years, you give them uh, to host a conference bigger like this one. So from this conference, we managed to get more partnership in local universities and local institutions like Ministry of ICT, Rwanda Heritage Academy, and some other more. So um, we created more impact, including uh, we implemented movement strategy implementation grant in East Africa. It went very successful. I'm, I'm trying to go faster. So we carried out uh, this research in uh, Congo, Burundi, and Rwanda in East Africa. I hope some of you know those countries. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this, this was the findings. These were the statistics. But um, uh, an interesting uh, statistic statistics is that more than 87% of the people in the region are willing to contribute on Wikipedia. The challenge is that uh, they don't know it and the language barrier. Yes, so, and, and, and again, more are uh, youth. Yes, we have uh, strategies, short term and long term in education. So we, we compare short term as growing uh, a flower, just checking our mailing list from our research, texting them, sending emails, call them for our um, learnings, call them for our uh, meetups, physical or online, and then we plan them that we push our agenda in our communities. Long term, skills development, we, we, we are looking forward from the communities around the world to have partnership, maybe with key media, uh, Kenya, uh, Canada, German. Why not? Can't we have a partnership so that you can give us this experience, language, skills, uh, human capacity, resource, capacity building for us to be able to, to strengthen our community? Since our community have a lot of volunteers, uh, lecturers, community really want to be in the movement, but the skills, tangible skills. So this is what we are looking forward. Yes, I think, uh, I, yeah. Uh, I'm trying, maybe this is the last. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yes. Uh, so um, uh, thank you so much. That was my presentation. I was trying to be quick. Thank you all for your presentations. Uh, if you have a question or questions, feel free to ask them now. We do have time, sorry. <laughs> okay.
this is intended to be funny, so at, at what age you become a senior Wikipedian? Like, what is the criteria to become a senior Wikipedian? Yeah, it is. Just because if I turned 40 like two month, two weeks ago, so like, am I senior or not? I would say as soon as you dare to enter the courses for the seniors. <laughs> would that work as an answer? Other questions, comments? Yeah, yeah. One comment that uh, the seniors from Lucci's program were very helpful for uh, Polish young people when we have common projects. Uh, so really they dealt with them like on easy way. We are so stressed and everywhere and the volunteers from Czech Republic were great with the young people and teach them, taught them everything, <laughs> editing. And uh, the second, I have a question for Rebecca. Number two, <laughs> first of all, uh, ovation that you came here really after all everything. <laughs> yeah, we are we are uh, tracking you on the Telegram, and uh, second, um, th there was a, I will uh, check your presentation later, but there was a, a survey about uh, that there are, um, most uh, most of young people. Uh, like 87% uh, are willing to contribute and most of them are young people. So um, the same question, how, how young? And uh, how did you check it? It was like a poll or in, uh, in, in uh, how, how many uh, people uh, have you asked? Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. I'll be happy to answer that. Actually, the fact that I was too quick, I did maybe mention the, the issue. Actually, we had, we in, in Rwanda, we implemented movement strategy implementation grant, you know that? So we carried out a research in East Africa, Rwanda, Burundi, and Tanzania. I know, Rwanda, Burundi, and Congo. So through that research, it was about skills development, needs assessment. You get it? Yes, so um, those are where the statistics we got from the research. Um, there, there was 87% uh, of, of, of young people from 14 years old to 60 old. I, I, I mentioned it maybe to 60, but a bigger number is between 14 to 30, but the overall statistics, we, 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 I don't know how. I can mention it maybe, but it, it, it is like that. That was the facts from the statistics we carried out in, in, in our community, in our local communities. So another question, maybe I forgot something you mentioned the last. Thank you. Oh, you are satisfied? Yeah, I will, I will just, uh, yeah and I can share the link because the, 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 the research findings are shared on Wikimedia Commons. And I have a, a, a piece of copy there. You can see on that on the desk there. Uh, that one. One minute. Okay. You see, uh, it is it is more. Uh, this is one of the copy we wrote. Wikimedia Communities Movement Strategy 2030 in Africa Great Lakes, skills development and community engagement. So. So you can find all this on Wikimedia Commons. Uh, all the findings and the statistics. Or oh, personally, I can share with you the whatever you want to, to learn about that. Yeah. So, but we have we are now having facts of uh, what are the challenges in our community, what are the opportunities, what are the people like you have a big mailing list of the people because we could ask a question in our in our survey uh, brochures that are you really willing to join Wiki, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Foundation? Are you willing to contribute on Wikipedia? 90% um, they say yes. 
What is the challenge? I don't know what it is. What is the challenge? I don't have internet. What is the challenge? I am a girl. I can't use the computer. You know, those, those, those such uh, challenges. So we have a lot of facts uh, from needs assessment in our local communities. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a question also for Lucy, for senior citizens. Um, how do you contact them to reach to your workshops? In, in what means? Thank you for that. It's actually a really good question. Does it work? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we, we observed a little bit how it works and we did quite some iterations, I would say, last two years. And one thing which works very well is the banner. So we actually have a banner every January. We have a fundraising campaign for the senior program in, in December. And so we fundraise. We usually have some video and, and, and we talk about the program and its impact. And then at the same time, we open the good number of courses from January, and, and that as well comes with banner at the Wikipedia. So the banner has a really good result. And then we as well cooperate with a few of the NGOs who focus on working with elder people. Uh, we as well have this framework of univers universities of third age. So our universities has a program for elder people as well. So some of them as well pair up with us. And then we have a newsletter and what we did with last year's is this is the first time engagement for the beginners. Then often this requires my colleague coordinator to call them in the later stages when we were through the COVID and through the online courses. We have to make sure that we have the like zero lesson where they can drop in and get oriented within the online environment to see whether they manage. And we try to encourage them to do it and to support them at the beginning so they don't drop out. And then what we do later is we as well offer like extensions. So we have this, this, this common courses now, and then we have as well something from last year started, which we call Wiki Schola, Wiki School. It comes, it's a different one from the Polish one though. It comes every month as a, as a two hours online session and it's on specific topics. So those who took the basic courses and they want to continue, so that would be like a session on how to create Infobox or session how to put basic Wikidata into your article or how to upload a picture which you are not author of. So tiny little topics to keep them engaged through the year. Um, you told that you are using Wikipedia banners like to gain attention of the seniors, but the issue is that um, generally signing up on Wikipedia and starting interacting with Wikipedia is kind of difficult. I wonder like how you manage to ask these people to join and contribute or telling that they are willing to be part of this program. I don't know, but the traffic at Wikipedia happens. Like everybody ends up at Wikipedia <laughs> and I think we just use it. And I think it works as well generationally that maybe some, uh, some adult people, like average age uh, people, like most of us here, I guess, don't offense anybody, they just see it and then they maybe tell their grandparents, like, look, maybe you want to join the course. But I, I, I don't really, I honestly don't know how it works. <laughs> But it works. <laughs> just because maybe and I, I encourage you, you to try phone it. Number or something that if you're interested, just make a call. Then we will continue on the phone or something like that. But no. if it is happening through the Wikipedia, that would be very much interesting. Yeah, we have a site. We have like a page which is dedicated to the senior courses, and there is a list of uh, courses which are just open, and they can sign up usually through Google Form. This is it. But we have to collect their personal data through the Google Form, definitely, and then we get in touch with them. So that, 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 like, that's the individual part. But first, they have to register themselves. That's the first step. Interesting. Anyone else? So let's clap. It seems that it's over. Thank you all. <laughs> Uh, so um, this session is over, but we will have uh, the final session, Don't Go Anywhere, uh, in five minutes right here. So um, you can take a walk or, or be here wherever you like.